Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Welcome everybody to this afternoon session. And um, the, the topic of the session is learning unit two, pointing out. And um, we have a very special guest with us this afternoon who's going to be talking to us a little bit about pointing out from his uh, perspective as both a detective for many years as well as a private investigator. Excuse me, Good permit afternoon, me to. Bernadine. And sorry, I see yeah. Dion. How are you? Very well in yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm also very, very good, well. thank so, you. Okay, can you hear me? Is my voice clear? Loud and clear? Yes, it's clear. We can hear you clear, loud and clear. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Can you can tell us a little bit about yourself? Here's some uh, um, an image about how many hats you can wear. Okay, uh, my name is Gideon Jones. Uh, I've been in the police 19 years, a detective most of the time, and also at the crime intelligence or intelligence unit, organized crime unit. I then left the police, and I've been now a forensic investigator for 23 years. I'm also not an expert witness, but I'm being used as, uh, well, I suppose I say subject matter expert on the investigation of, on investigation, crime investigations and intelligence. And uh, yeah, I've been there, done it, I've had so many cases, I can't even count all of them. And uh, my job probably at this point in time is investigating all kinds of cases. My latest big case that I've done, it's a fraud case involving 250 million rand stolen by a person. <coughs> so yeah, well, any kind of case. I investigate from murder to robbery to fraud. Okay, so so just yes, for that's basically... clarity, Gideon, yeah. you are currently a private investigator, a forensic investigator working for yourself. That is correct, yes. And you are investigating criminal offences as well. Yes, the it it is a it's a mixed bag. It is from uh, crime or crime conduct to uh, disciplinary problems to systems, uh, all kinds of work. In other words, okay. it's 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 totally the whole bag you can think of. Okay. Intelligence, right. uh, okay. even sort of violence, where you're being asked to conduct investigations with specific requirements. Mm. So yes, you 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 become a jack of all trades. Yeah. If I can put it that way. Okay, and and just for a, a little bit of clarity, um, do the police approach you to help with the criminal investigations, or do private clients slash companies? I want you to focus specifically now for a moment just on the. The, the fraud, because I mean, fraud is a criminal offense. Um, was that a company that approached you? Yes, I'm approached by companies all the time. Attorneys, companies, um, attorneys or advocates who are busy with, with civil litigation, asset recovery, all kinds of stuff. But majority of instances where I get involved yes. are usually fraud cases where a private company will approach you. They've lost serious money because investigations is a very expensive business and then you conduct an investigation for them or on their behalf and when you're finalized or finished you either submit a report or a case docket is opened and you also then assist the police and the prosecutor in the process okay. of taking the case to court the latest okay. one i'm referring to for example is um, where I'm, I'm assisting the, the state, the investigating officer, with the case. Uh, I can think of another case last year where I actually I had to write a statement for a judge. Mm. Oh dear. Regarding a content of court case. Now, I've never written a statement about it. And I've actually, <laughs> when I tried to do research, I couldn't find any example. Oh my but word. I actually wrote it, handed it to the judge. He signed it. 
and he was happy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gideon, so, so why? It's, it's, it's a mixed bag. It's really oh. a mixed, mixed bag. Okay, so I, I asked you specifically to come and talk to us a little bit today about pointing out. Um, please please share your, your um, insight with us in terms of what a pointing out is and how it relates to admissions slash confessions. Okay, uh, those three things to me are very interrelated. Mm -hmm. With other words, and, and let us take it back to a crime. Let, let us say crime. And I'm going to talk from it from an investigation perspective outside the police. Okay. Do people outside the police investigate crimes? Yes, all the time, all the time. Doesn't make the headlines or the news for that matter. But do mm -hmm. we do it? Yes. And quite more cases than actually is realized or are realized. Um, for an example, what happens if someone has committed a crime? Mm -hmm. And for some or other reason, that is being investigated. Let us take a fraud case. You as an investigator outside the police acts on behalf of company Y or company, let's say company A. Mm -hmm. You're investigating this case. As part of your investigation, one of the things that you will do, you will probably interview people. That is one of the major things, most important things that you do, mm -hmm. either in the police or as a private person. Now, while interviewing a person, that person, you realize the person is not telling the truth. While yeah. investigating, you obtain evidence, physical evidence, documentary evidence. The person might be involved in the case. You interview the person, you maybe confront that person. The person says to you, look, yes, I took the money. Now, I took the money. That in itself is actually not a confession. Uh, uh, that is more of a... Um, so I'm just trying to get this. That is an admission because mm -hmm. a confession relates to all the elements of a specific crime. With other words, a, a proper confession, once a person has made a confession to you, there must be no other explanation or, uh, or guilt of any other person. Uh, it, it must cover all the elements of the crime. There must be nothing okay. left open. As an escape route for liability in that case. Okay. For example, if a person said to you, look, I took the money, but I was forced to do so. Immediately what that person tells you, that is an admission, mm -hmm. but he's not, he's not uh, adhering to all the elements the requirements, of the crime. Yeah. Requirements to, to, to meet the criteria. I can think, for example, in court where you say, yeah, I, I hit the person. I hit him in his face. Mm -hmm. Does it mean you're guilty of assault? No, no, no. You come up and say, I hit him because if I did not hit him, I had to shoot him. Yes. Education ground. In other words, you have to be very careful. Admissions are not always, um, doesn't uh, necessarily mean a person has confessed to the crime. Yeah. Can anybody, police officer, person outside can, can, an admission made to you be used as evidence? Oh, yes, most definitely. Even to police officers who are not commissioned officers may testify about admissions because mm -hmm. it's not a confession. But let's now say the person says, yes, I took the money. And that suspect, let's call it a suspect now, no case has been opened. You still yeah. have the investigation. Um, what's the difference between the suspect and the accused? You remain a suspect until you have been charged, arrested and charged. Then you become the accused. So at okay. this point, you're still a suspect. Okay. Or a witness for that matter. It all depends. It might be a witness. Who, witnesses may become suspects. So, so it can become muddy. Actually a very, say again. It can become Sorry. very muddy. Yes. Yes. That is very important. And. And, and, and here is a caveat that I want to put in. You always have to treat people as witnesses. Mm -hmm. Try to treat them as witnesses. The moment the person becomes a suspect, you are going over in a confrontational cycle. Okay. So always try to, be, to keep people as witnesses, even if they're lying. It doesn't matter. Because everything a person say, every single thing, whether it's written down or not written down or recorded or not, becomes a statement. Mm. Now, remember, you still have to prove that the person yeah. said it or 
stated it. That's why I always record my interviews or my uh, interrogations. Okay. okay. Uh, let us say the person has now made an admission to you. And the admission goes over into a confession. You're still, mm -hmm. you're now a private investigator. No. And the person says to you, yes, I took the money. One day I saw that I could get my hands on a thousand rand. I did it. I wasn't caught. So I decided to keep on doing it. Mm. And every day I took a thousand rand from the till. Oh, just by example. No, no, we're dealing with a fraud case. I, I, put, I, I transferred a thousand rand from the company's uh, bank account to my own bank account. Yes, I mm. knew it was wrong. Yes, I knew I shouldn't do it. But I thought I would get away from it. I needed the money. Mm. Now, then it, it starts to go over into confession. Okay. Remember, there are requirements in terms of law, what a confession rule or, or what a confession must adhere to requirements. Uh -huh. Yeah, we, we're going to get there. Yeah. If, yeah, it must be free. You yeah. cannot pressurize a person unduly into it. Um, but we, we can talk about it later. But now the person has made a confession to you. And the person says, yes. Um, all the money that I've paid into my bank account, I withdrew and I put yeah. it in my safe. Ah, okay. In my house. And I kept all the slips. And I also kept a diary. I'm, I'm just making up now evidence. Yes, yes, yes. In my safe at home. I can go and show you. In your car you get, with the person, goes to his house. You go there, you take that money, you take the deposit slips, you take the, the diary. Can you do that? Yes. Police officer obviously can do that as well. Now, what yes. that person has done now has done, a, 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 um, that, that's a confession, but there's also a pointing out. Okay. They went and showed you, or they'll say, look, all the transactions is on my computer. My computer is in my room at home. Can you show me? Yes. You go there and you go and you take possession of the computer. Can you do that? Yes, you can. So the pointing out is, mm. is pointing out to something or some part of the case that is relevant to the guilt of that person. In other words, that will lead to as part of the confession. So the okay. part of the confession. And okay. you can testify about it in court. Yes. Now it is important to note there are also requirements. Uh, legal requirements mm. pertaining to this. And that is very important. You have to realize that you have to meet a number of requirements. Mm. Um, let me... Uh, um, sorry, I'm just looking at the examples that I've got here, but okay. Now, the case, now, what happens now? Let us say the person has stolen 50,000 rand. The suspect. Yeah. You go to the company, you say to them, look, I've got your suspect. I've got your 50,000 rand. Now, I've got all the evidence, uh, a computer, slips, etc. And this, the company director says, look, I don't want to open a case docket. Oh. Whoop, whoop up. There you give it back to the person, and the person walks away. Goes the, the, to, to the person from whom you got it? Yeah, suspect. Okay, okay. And then the suspect Why? basically walks away. Why? Because and in this case... The uh, the company director or the company owner is not obliged by law to open a case docket. Okay. But let's say it's five hundred thousand or a million rand. Yeah. Then by law, yes, he is required to open a case docket. Yeah. And I think that's what I also read. What is incorrectly, I think, in the manuals, which I do not agree with. Yeah. It is not you as the investigating officer, private investigator, who opens the case docket. It is the person against whom the crime has been committed. Mm. In other words, the victim, the company. The, police. the victim, the company, or a person mm. acting on behalf of the company. Yes. Okay, all right. Now, you will write, submit, probably submit a report to the company. That report may go to the case docket. Mm -hmm. They may use it as evidence. They will probably require you to write a statement. And therefore, you have to investigate the matter exactly the same way as mm. the Officer will investigate it. Okay. But there are a few things that that counts in your favor, and and this is where I'm on on. I differ a little bit from from what the manual says. Any 
any confession made. As long as it's out of free will, there are requirements by law. Mm -hmm. Any confession made to a private person, private investigator, doesn't matter if you're the uh, appointed by the, the company in an official capacity as a private investigator, any admission or confession made to you, you can testify about it in court. Now, this is a major difference between us and the police. Yeah. You look at the law and you look at what the law says. It actually, if you look at the constitution, it talks about an uh, arrested person. You know, people who have been, uh, the moment you become, an, you're not a suspect, but you're, yeah. uh, um, you've been arrested for a crime. But okay, I don't want to go into those differences. Yes, but, yes. Um, the difference here being that a confession made to a police officer, a commissioned police officer, mm -hmm is acceptable as evidence in court. But yes. that police officer has to warn a person and mm -hmm. inform the suspect now, let's say the suspect, has yeah. to inform the suspect of his or her rights. You have the right, the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. You don't have to say anything. Anything you say mm -hmm. may be used as evidence. Now, a, brief, a private investigator does not have to say that to a, to a suspect. Okay, that's There's interesting. No obligation on you to inform a person of his rights. Not to mean you can hit a person and that will stand as you, know, you can mm. force a person to make a confession. The, the case law is quite clear on this. Mm -hmm. There are still standards that you have to meet that is aligned with the constitution. But the yep. main difference is you do not have a legal obligation to inform a person of his rights if you are not a police officer or a peace officer for that. Okay. So, and those are very important things to consider when you investigate as a private person. Remember, you still have to meet a number of requirements. Yes. You yes. have to, for example, record everything. You still have to testify about it. You still have to be, for instance, pointing out, has to be, not has to be, it's not has to be, but preferably, there should be photographs with date stamps, time mm. stamps, perhaps a video with, other words, corroborating evidence. Yeah. Again, it does not mean you have to have it. It's a matter of fact, I'm, I sent you a document where the court says you don't even have to write it down. Sure. You can, yeah. Whereas a police officer writes it down on an SAP form, but mm. on a pointing out, that is not even a requirement. Sure. It is, That's uh, interesting. It, those are rules. Yeah, no, it's not really a requirement. Because, uh, and, and again, for example, um, um, I'll take you back to a case that I did as a police officer many, 30 years ago. I can't remember the details anymore. Yeah. I'm investigating a vehicle. We get a vehicle that is discarded somewhere in a rural area. Yeah. We check the vehicle, we see it belongs to Mr. X. But Mr. X doesn't reside in that area. Highly suspicious. Yeah. Interview the people there. Eventually, we get the person who confesses to us that yes, that vehicle did belong to uh, a person, but that person has been murdered for Muti. Oh. Now, we are not commissioned officers at the time. But the, do we still hear the confession? Yes. Do we still take it down? Yes. And I'll tell you why it's important you have to do it. Based on what the person has said to us, and that's exactly how I testified in court, he made a report to us. Based on the report that he made, he took us two or three kilometers into the felt and show, uh, pointed out a shallow grave where we found the remains of Mr. X. Then further than that, he actually took us uh, to another place in the felt where he pointed out genitalia of the person that they cut off from the deceased body of the, of the uh, uh, victim. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, your, your audio you... is, is cutting out every now and then. I'm going to ask that you, you go sorry off, that. off the, the, the platform and come back on to see if we can restore your audio. Uh, we're losing important, important... Uh... I'm going to... I'm not sure. I see. I'm. I've. I've got the power. With the power failures here at home. Sorry. Probably. Can you hear yeah. Me? It's probably got something to do with it. Yes. Yes. I hear you loud and clear. Should I continue? 
It's just like every every five or so seconds, the audio cuts out, and then we lose what you are, are saying. Um, I'll try again. If it's not good enough, I'll, I'll see if I then I'll try and restart. But I'm not sure if that's going to solve the the problem this side. But let me yeah, try. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh no no so, no. Carry on. It it seems to be now. So with other words, in this case, we did not even have a case. We did not have a registered case. Nobody even knew that the victim died. So you conducted an investigation where the normal rules of pointing out will say, or what is written in the manuals, is that the person who conducts the investigation should not do the pointing out, which is true. But it all depends on the circumstances of the case and the investigation. Hmm. Um, so, so, uh, but the so you guys, for me, guys followed up on a stolen car, and then you got to the, got the stolen I, car. We, we lost a bit of the, the information around that. Okay, we followed up on the stolen vehicle, um, got to a person who uh, admitted to killing the the owner of the vehicle. With other words, made a confession yeah. to us. We could not testify about the confession in court because we were not commissioned officers. But what okay. I could testify, as I did, that he made a report to us. And based on the report, he made out a pointing out. And that stood us in the Ah. I remember, yeah, but a pointing out is very, it, it, I would consider it one of the most important investigation tools in the arsenal of any investigator. Mm -hmm. You must be proficient in that. That is, I've done it so many times where, as, not even as a commissioned officer in the police, where the the actual confession cannot even be heard in court. But remember, if a person makes a report to you, which actually mm. amounts to a confession, and yeah. he points out uh, a, a firearm, he points out uh, uh, um, a document, a computer, a hard drive, whatever it might be, that is excellent evidence because of the fact that the person pointed it out to you, you would not have had knowledge of that specific piece of evidence. Mm, that, yes, exactly. I mean, that is, it's one of the most solid pieces of evidence or evidence gathering that you as an investigator can obtain in an investigation. Mm. It's very practical. Yes, and, and but everything begins with investigation where you have to note Write mm. down everything. I would actually go further than that. And I mean, one of the court cases I sent you, I think it's a 2015 case on identification parades. You can see where the court criticizes the police. And I can see that on a daily basis. The problem with the police is that they don't do their pre-job, the job properly from the beginning. With other words, you take a statement from a person. He says, you ask him to describe the suspect. They describe the suspect in one or two sentences. Mm. And later on, when it comes to the court, you'll see that the requirement, for instance, for uh, pointing out is, uh, not pointing out the identification, but it is so much higher. Mm. You really have to have detail, especially if you've only got a single witness. Yeah. Or you don't have in, uh, a, very, a lot of corroborating evidence, which we don't usually have. Mm. And in 90% of the cases, 90% of the cases, suspects convict themselves on what they tell you. And I would actually go so far in saying is that they convict themselves by telling you stories, by lying. <laughs> and what do we as investigators do when we interview? We stop the interview or we confront the person mm. by saying to that person that he or she is lying to us. That's the worst thing that you as an investigator can do. You have to yeah. get narratives. You have to give detail. Yes. Must I try again? Can you hear me? Ben? No, no, no. Why, why, do, why should you not stop this, the person when, when, when you realize that they are lying? Why should you let them continue? How, how do they convict themselves? How do they convict themselves? Usually by lying. You ask a person a story, there's been a housebreaking and a, 
Yeah, and, 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 and you're talking to the person. The person tells you a story that you can prove to be a lie. Immediately, mm -hmm. his credibility as a witness is gone. Remember, you still have to prove your case. That's always, yes. always, the, we, we must always remember it. We can't prove a case by the lying of a suspect mm -hmm. or a, an, an accused. You still have to prove the case and put it to the court. It must still yeah. be a prima facie case that you supply to court. But mm -hmm. then, if there is a question who's telling the truth and who's lying, that is where it becomes material. Oh, okay. And, and, and then it's too late to do anything about it if you did not speak to the person. Mm -hmm. Then it's too late to ask him the questions that yes. now arises in court, which yes. always arises in court, always. Mm -hmm. And you, you've never went to it, you never uh, addressed it during the investigation. And you, mm. can't do, you can't undo it or you can't get back to it. It's too late. Now, okay. if, if I go to a pointing out, a pointing out doesn't have specific guidelines, except the, if I say that, I also have a caveat here. Of course, mm -hmm. there are guidelines. Yeah. There are lots of guidelines and you have to work on case law. Yeah. You have to work on, on, on what the book says, but you have to understand a few things. Think about the constitution, think mm -hmm. of a person's rights. And yes. think about the, the main principles of investigation. And what is the what are the main principles? A search for the truth. Mm. And it must be fair. Mm. And you must and be biased. Transparent. In other words, you do the correct things. Do it correctly. You yeah. record everything and you are able to in court relay it to, to, the, to a judge. That, yes. Those are the requirements. Every single case that goes to court is flawed. Always remember that. You do not get a case that is not flawed. Mm. And the reason is, is, is actually quite simple. Is that you were not there when the crime was committed. Yeah. The only person who can really tell you all the detail. And even a person who commits the crime forgets about the detail or get, get it wrong. A lot of the times get it wrong. Like eyewitnesses, they get it wrong. Even mm -hmm. the person who committed the crime get it wrong. So you're dealing with what you have in terms of what is in front of you. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I, I think I just mentioned the principle. Who's, your, who's the best witness to a crime? Not the victim, the mm -hmm. perpetrator. The perpetrator, yeah. Who's got the best information about the crime? And if you mm -hmm. do it correctly, if you interview correctly, if you continue it, that is where you get your investigation. That's where you get your information. That's mm. where you get your truths and your lies. You often get truths in admissions. Admissions are important stuff. For example, there has been, a, let's say, take a car accident. Yeah. The person says, yes, I drove the vehicle, but I was not driving neg negligently. Okay. He's made, he's made an admission. What's the admission? Yep. That he was the driver of the vehicle. Now, if that person chose not to say anything, you first had to prove he was driving the vehicle. <laughs> yes. And let me tell you, as simple as it sounds, I've seen it outside many times. Often, that's where the case falls. We can't even prove that he was driving the vehicle. I'm he doesn't have to say anything. Mm -hmm. The accused doesn't have or the suspect. He says nothing. You have to prove your case. Yeah. Now, how do you prove he was driving? It, it's not that easy as it sounds. I've had cases, mm -hmm. quite a few actually, where later on the person says, I wasn't the driver. Mm. Now, suddenly you're, you're stuck. Now you have to prove he was the driver. Sure. And he brings two witnesses to say he wasn't the driver. <laughs> ah. God, one is your case. You thought you had it all sewn up. Yeah, yeah. And you for, you forgot about those elements. Yeah, no, no, no. Investigation is a is a, a is, is a very sure a very difficult thing actually. You know, sometimes investigations can be difficult, and and I have to say, I I've never seen a perfect case. I've yeah. never seen a perfect interview. I've never had one myself. That's yeah. why you report everything. That's why you try and get as much detail, detail, detail. Devil is in the detail. That yeah. is where you, 
the court believes your narrative or do not believe your, your yeah. narrative. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um. Um. And I, sorry, I like to record mm -hmm. everything. I love to record it. Why is the recording so important? Uh, when you talk about recording, out. Yes. Audio, audio, video, uh, specified. Okay, the wise. best recording, the best recording, the best you can have is video yeah. and audio. Video Why? and audio. Yes. You know, this is another interesting thing in, in investigations. When you take a case to court, yes, you cannot testify as to the body language of a person and what it meant. Because you're yeah. not an expert on it. Yes. But the court can make a decision based on his observations during a trial on certain body language uh, results, which speaks to the truth or uh, the dishonesty of a, of a, of a, yeah. a, a, a person charged with a crime. Isn't that interesting? You can't yeah, give that evidence to court, but the court itself can make a can draw that inference. Uh, uh, yes, inference on certain things. Now, if you okay, present I want to, a video camera yeah. with a video of a person, then yeah. the, that evidence can actually be handed to the court and the court can make an inference on it. Okay. Which so on, I want, on, on a recording itself, a, a, a voice recording, they cannot. Yeah. If you, if you just pause there a moment, for example, if you look at the images here, no? Um, yes. it, it's, it's likely, would it be that this person, let's say, for example, Jose de Silva, the accused in the case, let's yes. say he was forced to do this. How likely would the court believe him? If you look at these two images, he's not handcuffed. He's, there's no armed guard in the right hand picture. He's drinking a cold drink. Would uh, you see those, the, no, these are investigation tricks. You, yes, 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 but, you, you but, but I hear you. I yeah, hear the court you. will make a, on, based on what I see An here, inference. right in front of me, yes. remember, the, remember a court has to make a decision based on the evidence presented to Evidence, yes, yes. That is evidence presented to a court. Based on the evidence that I see, if I'm now the person sitting, the magistrate or the, the judge, yeah. that is excellent evidence. We, uh, uh, and maybe you always have a person in, in, in cuffs, in, not necessarily handcuffs, but you'll have him in feet. Uh, Good, um, cuffs. And, and you have to have an armed person close by okay. in dangerous cases. So that, that one is a problematic. But the okay. cool drink, what is the first thing you do to a suspect? <laughs> you buy him a cool drink and a, and a pie or a, a wimpy. And he sits there and drinks his cool drink, and that's on a, on a photograph, as you see yeah. here. Well, that's yeah. excellent evidence. Excellent evidence. If he now comes up and says, I was threatened, does it look like he was threatened? No. So there goes one of the, yeah. the, the reasons to attack the, the pointing out in this in this case. So yes, because you they, have to. They usually that. try and attack that, hey? They always do it. Remember, that's another thing I like to tell uh, investigators that I'm teaching. Um, they don't attack. Uh, Harry Nell actually said this. I took this from a lecture that he gave. Mm -hmm. That these days they do not attack or, or they don't attack the evidence. They attack the process. Ah. Uh -huh. With other words, did I do it correctly? If I mm. did not do it correctly, you can even get an acquittal just based on that. Sure. Even if the, the evidence is there. Uh, mm. Okay, I have to be careful not to oversimplify it, but yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Things, right? What I would have liked to see on that photograph, mm -hmm. because all cameras these days have it, is a is a date and time imprinted on the on the uh, timestamp on the on the photograph. Yeah, but if, if I can just I've give a caveat that for, for that, time. yeah, if I give a, give a yes. caveat for that, uh, it comes out of a book I was reading. Uh, profiler Diaries by Professor Labaskakhni, yes. and I took it out of there. But I'm 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 sure that that the key to the the photograph uh, di uh, uh, diary in the in the case docket would have had that type of detail on. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It will have it. You're absolutely yes. correct. Yeah. But think about this. Think of what I'm saying. If I'm looking at a photograph, mm -hmm. 
there's a date stamp on it and a time. Yeah. Ah, good evidence. Again, that's the coke in his hand that he's not being forced, Mr. De Silva's hand. He's not being yeah. forced. There's the date and time on the photograph. Mm. How do you counter that if you're a defense counsel? Yeah. But then uh, another caveat. You must be sure you've got the correct date and time on it. <laughs> because I've seen cases where it was the wrong date and time. Oh, and then you have to explain that. Why? Yes. Yeah. yeah what did no, you say so just now? The devil is, is in the details. The devil is in the detail. And I've mm. seen things go wrong. I've seen it. And it only adds to the difficulty in proving the case. Okay. All right. And, and, and remember then, you've got interesting things like... Um, uh, just go back to that the, that uh, document you just had there. there. Okay, um, which one? The, uh, the the decided case. Yeah, the case that I highlighted. This one. Yeah. Yes. Four point one. You know what? You're interesting. What you'll see there is extra curial confession. Now that is confessions, pointing outs, and admissions. The, those three things that yeah. was not made in court or during trial. That is usually done in the investigation stage. Oh, okay. That is what we are actually focusing on. Uh, uh, you get a lot of confessions, admissions, yeah. in court. Yeah. Two different things here. Okay. Different requirements as well, legal requirements. And, 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 and civil litigation as well. They, yeah. they, I see it, uh, it's quite common yeah. to uh, make uh, admissions admit certain things in, in, in documents. And it's interesting in, 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 uh, in civil litigation, uh, is they focus on, on a little bit, they focus a little bit different than in, in, court, in criminal cases. Yeah. But there's one thing that goes through everything, detail, detail, detail. Oh, I've got one word that I wanted to say in terms of detail. Yeah. That comes to the date and time stamp and everything. We say you anchor everything. And you don't read that uh, in any manual that I've seen in South Africa. Yeah, it's yeah. in my manual. Anchor means place, date, time. Mm, mm. Every single thing. If, if you do a pointing out, photograph A, photograph C, it might be different places. Yeah. What? Where was it exactly? Yeah. What was the date? What was the time? You have yes. to anchor everything that the person tells you. We don't always realize that the person tells you things that actually happened on different dates mm. and different locations. And we are not sharp enough as investigators to pick up to anchor it. Every mm. single thing must be anchored. And then, of course, comes the question How do you know about what you're telling me? Yeah. Think about this. The person says, The guy had the yellow shirt on. How in the world does he know it? We don't stop and ask ourselves those questions. As yeah. As well. Think about the, uh, what I've said, the detail. Person gives you detail on something. Mm. How does that person know it? Mm. Interesting. In, 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 yeah, in, in, in cases that are very difficult, is they give you information that could only have been known by the person who committed the crime. Sure. And we should be sharp to 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 catch up on, on stuff like this. Also, another thing that I will put in here that you don't see, I would say what you should do is you should uh, lock it in. With other words, person says to you on that date and time, he did, uh, mm -hmm. I was there. You, you, you must lock it in. You were here. There must be no doubt, no ambiguity. Mm -hmm. Especially with things like pointings out and confessions and stuff. Okay. Clear, clear, detail, detail, detail. Otherwise, they change around. They come to court. They say, no, 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 no. Yes, that was the place. But that was the place my friend pointed out to me that I pointed out to you. Mm. Okay. You've got a gap in our case because we never thought about that angle of, of mm. explaining everything. Sure. Oh. A case where you find the fingerprint of the suspect on a on a window. Your case is clear and shut. And yeah. then he comes to court and says that, no, 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 I was there a week before the incident. I actually oh. did some garden work there. 
Okay. Uh, and they murdered the, the owner. There's nobody to say that's not the case. The owner is dead. The owner uh, cannot say yes or no. We know uh, it's a lie, but how the hell do you prove it? Yeah. Because you never thought about Ooh. asking the person, is it that you touch that window, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, now exactly. the person comes up and he, the person lies to you, says, no, I've never been there. Mm. Let's go back now. He, now, if he now turns around in court, you've got Yeah. It. Yes, exactly. But, but you never you never thought of asking that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Gideon, in, in closing, in closing, yeah. um, can you talk to us just very briefly about um, doing what you do honestly, ethically, legally, and and why this is so important in, in, in your field of work, in any field of work uh, for that matter? I'll, I'll give you an example of a case we did in the High Court in Bloemfontein. Yeah. I Years after an incident, this was a surveillance on a track that delivered fuel. Eight years, we, write, we wrote a report of the person yeah. who observed it. We did the surveillance. Criminal case. All yeah. crime. The case, the case docket disappeared with all the evidence, with everything in it. Sure. The only evidence that remained was a copy of a report that I had on my computer. A copy of a report in black and white. Uh. That was accepted as evidence in court because we had everything, could explain everything and present it. Can sure. you believe this? We have to be very careful. That is why I say, if you do everything, look, you can make mistakes. We all make mm. mistakes. Sometimes the mistake can cost you uh, uh, a conviction. You've done yeah. something wrong that you, hopefully you did, but uh, you, you, you did in good faith. Yes. But, all investigators will make mistakes. You, you, you're dealing with the best advocates and lawyers in the world, yeah. in the country, that money can buy. So, and you can't always anticipate what is going to happen in two years' time when the case goes to, to court. Goes to court, yeah. Secondly, in the private environment, the one problem that we have is that we are bound by time because investigations are very expensive. Yes. And I can see it a lot of investigations that the investigator spends about 30 minutes in an interview. Uh, obviously, this is not what should be the ideal, yeah. but that's the real world we live in. Mm. But everything we do, let us make sure we're telling the truth. Let's make sure we've got the detail, that we're mm -hmm. honest, that we've done everything that we think we could have done it legally. Sometimes, even if you do something that is not correctly or, or absolutely legal, but it's a technical issue, that evidence yeah. can still be accepted as evidence. It, so it, it doesn't mean you've made a mistake in terms of the process that the evidence itself will automatically be rejected in court. No, 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 no. no. Okay. I've seen cases where... Even the investigating officer where it was found made a mistake or more than one mistake. Yeah. Everything yeah. was still accepted. Sure. So you, you, what I say is you do everything, you're open, you're honest. If you made a mistake, if you cannot say something, for example, you cannot, with all beyond reasonable doubt, state that this is the object that I saw mm. in the... Say it to the court. You have to be yes. open and honest. You have to say yeah. it. If you wrote down a registration number incorrectly, you must say yes. That acknowledge. I, I, I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge. Okay. That, that to me is the... Is the, the, the uh, okay, another lesson I would love to... You know, we seldom, seldom take statements anymore. Yeah. In a private environment. Because it's not a... a it's not a very productive way of, of working. We record it. And is that a statement? Yes. Is it an affidavit? No. But is it still a statement? Yes. So Again, you, you record it, audio and video? No, no. Usually we record it audio. I mean, Just we audio. don't have... Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, video is very seldom. It's only big, yeah. big cases. But okay. I have to right. say, I've recently completed that big fraud case. 
That statement yeah. was 850 pages. Arrogant statement. That it, took six months and a team of four people to compile. Yeah. That's, yeah, hopefully we'll see that case why. soon in the court, eh? Yeah, it's coming one of these days. But the point I want to make, it, it's mm -hmm. how many such cases can you take to court? What mm. the resources, the cost yeah. of such investigation yeah. is, is immense. Enormous. We, um, you know, I, I would say that is what we do is that we record as much as possible. I love my yeah. emails. Mm -hmm. You send it to a person who's a, a witness or a possible suspect. Yeah. You say to a person, give your narrative. Let them lie. Then you say to them, you follow up. Give me this answer. Just answer me on answer me on this. And they write you an email. Is that evidence? Excellent evidence. Excellent. Yes, excellent, excellent evidence. Yeah. Yes. So... Uh, I say keep record. Everything, record yeah. everything. Yeah. Don't try to rely on your memory. That's a sure yeah. recipe for disaster. <laughs> and I like to, to put everything in folders and files. We don't yes. like keep paperwork anymore. You know, uh -huh. everything is, is electronically captured. Mm. Does it then work? It makes yes, it, it works. Yeah, yeah. It, might, it, it works and it can be retained for years. Just make sure that you do it correctly. Yes, yeah. And, and then um, private investigators, investigators in a private environment. Guys, mm -hmm. if you're not sure, ladies, if you're not sure what to do, if you're not sure if it's legal, you have to warn a person or not. Don't not do it. Well, let me rephrase. Just go ahead and investigate. Don't get scared that you might be doing the wrong thing. If you're yeah. in that situation, go ahead. Just be as fair as possible, subjective, yes. precise. All those qualities we've already mm. uh, touched upon. Absolutely. And go ahead. Don't be too scared of it might not conform to a person's personal rights in terms of this or that, or there might be a, a, a problem with this. Don't be scared of that. Go and do it. If we don't succeed in court, there's always the next battle. And you will have hundreds of battles. And you will <laughs> learn. That's the, That's the bottom might line. lose a few. Yeah, but you will win the majority of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had a I had a and class I, this morning, yeah. Gideon. Sorry, just, just to end quickly. I had a oh. class this morning that uh, we spoke about making mistakes. If you make a mistake once, it's called a mistake. But if you make the same mistake a second time, it's called a decision. So it's important that we learn from our mistakes and we improve how we do what we do. The problem is, I can tell you what I see from in, in a professional from a professional perspective. Yeah. Number one, investigators do not even know that they're making mistakes. Oh. So they will continue on the same making range. the same mistake. And yeah, but I'm talking now your your mistake is being highlighted. Yeah. yeah. Yes, no, no, obviously it mm. and, and and you should learn from it. You cannot yeah. once you know that you've made a mistake, you cannot yeah. repeat that mistake. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. But uh, you don't have to be the most clever person in, in, in the world. As a matter of fact, I firmly, firmly do not believe in the theory of a super detective. Yeah, um, that that's that's a myth. You get excellent investigators, but uh, our field of investigation is just so vast, mm -hmm. so difficult, so open that the most clever investigator cannot be uh, um, good at everything. Simple yeah. as that. You need yeah. team investigations and just do it properly. Start at mm -hmm. the beginning. Take it point for point. You don't have to be too clever. Remember, yeah. the, the person who's the who's at risk here is not the investigator. It's the person who committed the crime or made the yeah. mistake. Yeah. They only have to have to make one mistake to be caught. And they usually will because usually there's a lie in somewhere that you can prove. Yeah, yeah. Um, Gideon, thank you very, very oh, sorry, much. And, 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 and sorry, that's a last thing. I think private investigators. Yeah. And, and corporate investigators, forensic investigators, uh, is actually 
the the way of the future. Mm. I do not think any state, any state in the world has got the ability to to keep up with the development and technology mm. and the development of, of crimes for that matter, and to be to have the funds and the resources to investigate them. Mm. Okay, that's my my two cents on it. Okay, um, Gideon, I'm going to open the floor. I see we have we have uh, two students that have joined us. Um, yes. I'm going to ask the students. Let me just double check if they can um, unmute their mics. Um, okay, yes, the mics have been attended, uh, have been allowed. So I'm going to ask you to raise your hand, and then I'm going to uh, acknowledge you. Then you can unmute your mic and then uh, pose your question. If you don't feel comfortable, you are more than welcome to pop a question into the um, into the chat box as well, and then we can take your question from there. Are there any questions? Okay, any comments um, on on our presentation this afternoon? I know it was. It was very, very in depth, and I think um, really more than we bargained for. Can I ask then just for a reaction? Um, if you can use the little button at the top to to give me your your uh, emotional reaction on on today's session, whether our hands uh, a thumbs up or a or a, an applause. Okay, Sidion, I'm I'm giving you an applause. Um, I'm going to end the session now because it doesn't seem that we we have any questions. Okay, thank you. There's a, there's another applause. I'm going to end the session. Sidion, thank you once again for being willing to share your insight, your wisdom, your practical um, experience with us. And um, and I'm sure that we we when we have our next session, there will be more um, more students that attend. I see Tepu is is typing something for us. So I'm going to pause just a quick moment. I'm going to end the the, the recording so that we um, we just have a, a recording.